Welcome to 5 Minute School and in this video we're going to be talking about Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. So this is a rapidly progressive disorder. It starts off with difficulty breathing, rapid breathing and low oxygen levels in the blood and it eventually leads on to respiratory lung failure. Here is the official Berlin definition of Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. So I'm not going to read this out, but I'm just going to leave it here for a reference. Uh, to summarize it, there's some kind of lung injury, which is either directly in the lungs or it's an indirect lung injury from elsewhere in the body, outside the lungs. And it leads on to an increase in inflammatory mediators in the lung tissue. And then we then have damage to the lung tissue because of these inflammatory mediators form a kind of cascade. The eventual result is reduced lung function, which means low oxygen in the blood, and eventually without intervention it can lead to organ failure. So, like we just said, it could either be a direct lung injury, or an indirect extra pulmonary or outside the lung injury. So here's a, um, some examples of both types. The general consensus is that the direct cause of acute respiratory distress syndrome are due to Direct forms of lung injury, so that's some kind of infection, for example pneumonia or some kind of direct damage to the lung tissue. Imagine accidentally um, inhaling uh, gastric secretions, so the acid causes uh, damage to the lung tissue, so anything causing damage to the lung tissue. With indirect extrapulmonary lung tissue damage, here are some of the examples. With indirect extrapulmonary lung damage, the issue is occurring outside of the lung, so imagine near the legs or in the feet. So there's been some kind of damage there. We have an increase in lysosome release or inflammatory mediators being released. They travel up to the right side of the heart and then travel into the pulmonary or lung circulation. And there, because of the rich blood supply to the lungs and the very thin thickness of the uh, epithelial tissue, there's a transfer of these inflammatory mediators into the alveoli of the lungs and this can initiate the inflammatory response there and cause the corresponding issues. So we have neutrophils, one of the inflammatory mediators which activate. They release proteases, cytokines and reactive oxygen species. This migration and this mediator release causes an increase in the permeability of the capillaries of the lung. And like we said, it has a very rich blood supply. So this is kind of like a knock-on effect. So then more inflammatory mediators cross over into this barrier between the, the blood supply and the lungs. And the same is happening the other way around. So the end result is the type 1 and type 2 alveolar cells start to die, basically. And this causes swellings. We have the formation of a hyaline membrane and loss of the pulmonary surfactant. And this pulmonary surfactant is what's preventing the, the alveoli collapsing. So we, we're leaning more towards collapse of the alveoli and this is making gas exchange difficult. So this is what's occurring pathophysiologically. Here is an x-ray showing healthy lungs and another x-ray showing someone with acute respiratory distress syndrome. You can see on the one who has the, the, the syndrome, you can see on both sides of the lungs we have whiteness, these white patches, it's quite a big uh, appearance. This is known as bilateral opacification. Opacity or op opacification when you're looking at an x-ray just means whiteness as opposed to uh, shading. So. We have bilateral opacification on both sides of the lungs. For the official diagnostic criteria for acute respiratory distress syndrome, it needs to be an acute onset, so it has to happen very rapidly. The ratio of partial pressure of oxygen to two fraction of inspired oxygen, so PaO2 to FiO2 has to be 200 or less. The x-ray needs to show these bilateral uh, whiteness or opacification and pulmonary artery wedge pressure needs to be 18 millimeters of mercury or less when it's measured. There also has to be no evidence of, of left atrial hypertension. Now, now let's just move on to the treatment just to keep things brief. Usually mechanical ventilation is required and this is where a machine is used, it's attached through the mouth down into the main airway and air and oxygen is blown into the lungs the patient is sedated for this to happen. Alongside the mechanical ventilation, patients are sometimes given corticosteroid therapy and heparin as well, but it's very case dependent. 